Welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Nick Kroger. And today we have a very special guest with us, Dave Joswick. And he's currently the executive director of New Hope for Kids and also serves on the board of directors for the National Alliance for Grieving Children. Um, Dave, we're so glad you're here with us today. Well, well, I sure appreciate this opportunity to share with your viewers uh, the mission of New Hope for Kids. Yes, absolutely. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about uh, adolescence and grief. And I know, um, you know, based on what you do and what kind of your life's mission is, um, you have a lot to, to help us understand about grief. Let's just start by defining what, what is grief? Well, in the case we're talking about children and even adults as well, it's a profound sense of loss. Unless you've been on, the, as I refer to it, the death path mm -hmm. uh, where you've experienced grief, you, you can't fully understand. To, to try to tell somebody that's not experienced grief what it's like, you may say it's a big void in my life. It's just that sense of, of that person not being there, not seeing, talking, hearing them. Uh, and it's it's something that lasts with people to varying degrees throughout their life. Mm. It's interesting. I, uh, I'd got a, I brought along an email I got from a woman uh, that came this week. It happened to listen to a um, discussion I had back in August with uh, the three wise guys mm -hmm. uh, talking faith. And she goes on to tell me about the death of her, her father and how listening to our talk connected to a lot of the dots and mm -hmm. she says none of us ended up in skid row or jail and and I talk at that time people do end up in in very bad situations as a result of death it can steer people absolutely in, in, you know we talk young people we're going to talk about but uh, um, Aaron Hernandez a New England Patriot typical teenager age 16 dad dies went in the wrong direction and and I'm sure a lot of people know he's in prison for the rest of his life yeah. uh, for homicide. It, it, it's, it's difficult enough for an adult to deal with. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's hard to imagine, you know, a young person having the emotional and even intellectual capability to, to, to hit it head on and deal with it and not have it affect your life. Well, it, it'll affect someone their entire life to yes. some degree, uh, to some degree. Um, what I've learned in doing this, and I've been doing this now for 16 years <laughs> as executive director, and, and how I backed into it, I've, I've lost two children, so I, have a, I know what it's okay. like. My parents have died but later in life, but I've had, I've had three suicides in my family, so I can identify with yeah. families that have had suicide. I know the deleterious effects suicide do, uh, causes with children. Um, so when, when, when a young person encounters grief, there's two things that happen that I've found universally. I mentioned the National Alliance for Giving Children. So I interact with organizations right. like this all over the country. And we try to educate and support and help new organizations grow and, and, and expand. But children have a profound sense of somebody else that is going to die, and they feel different than anybody else. And it was interesting in this uh, commentary of this email I got, the lady says, you, I was able to connect a lot of the dots. And children that don't have an opportunity to get their feelings out in the grieving process, they, they, they tend to be suppressed. Mm -hmm. And they're going to come out at some point later in life. And they're going to come out in ugly ways of relationship problems, mm -hmm. uh, depression, anger issues. All of a sudden, a person's become short fused, the littlest things, they just blow up. Right. And I could tell you stories of, of uh, the people that have shared their experience with me 40 years later mm -hmm. after a death, all this stuff is coming to the surface. So without, without getting the proper support, there's a high risk that, that people are gonna have emotional vicissitudes right. throughout their life. And I know because of you know, just ability for youth versus adult. Young people experiencing grief, they actually grieve in a different way or it may manifest itself in a different way than, than an adult. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Be the first thing you gotta keep in mind is with young people, you got a small mind, they're just maturing, they're growing. And so it's not uncommon for a young person, eight, 10, 12 years old, to grieve that, diff that death, say of a father or mother, from different perspectives as they mature and, and as they grow in life. Um, I've heard so many stories told of 
young people, and by the time they reach graduation, there's, an, there's not a parent there for graduation. A, a wedding, there's not a dad to walk them right. you know, down the aisle. And, and this has an impact uh, on these people. In fact, we at New Hope for Kids would like to start a young adult support program wow. uh, in, in the not too distant future. Um, our program now is, is, of course, focused on children. I might mention we, we work with children 3 to 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. We break them into age groups of 3 to 6, 7 to 12, and then teenagers. And that's the way we, we interact with them. The way we, um, people are in our program, and I hope I'm not getting off course. No, with no, no, question. no, it's all to deal with grief, yeah. Okay. Is, is that the people that come to our grief support program, uh, they're in those age groups. And so the way we structure our program is really the children become therapists for each other. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how children will bond with one another when they know they have something in common, and especially the death situation. There's a lot of things, ideas and thoughts going through these children's mind as well as everyone's mind because death is a new experience right. for them. There's no preparation. They haven't been prepared for it. They don't know what to do, what's going to come next, the thinking that's going on in their heads. They, they really don't. But then they begin to hear other kids talk, and it's similar, and they right. begin to identify, hey, this isn't uh, so, uh, so uncommon because, as I said, kids, they feel different than anybody else uh, after a death. And, and we can talk about uh, kids in school and, and you know, teachers and et, et cetera. Right. But they, they do feel different. And what you, you, you try to do is get them to understand they are different with kids that haven't had a death, but they're very common with kids that have experienced right. a death. And I have found children that have gone through our program, and we've been around for 20 years. Right. And we've had, I think, somewhere in the range right now, around 6,000 children have wow. gone in that time frame have gone through. So we get kids that grow up, become young adults, they come back and volunteer wow. with us. And so you begin to see the, the maturity of these kids in, in the, the strength in their character. And so I tell parents that uh, they are coming into our program nowadays is that you'll be amazed how strong your child will become as future, that, that issues that some people think are problems, young people think are problems, they're just going to blow right through. They're right. not a problem because they've really managed a difficult situation. This is the most difficult time in, in, in any right. child's and life. Right, and instead of letting a situation or circumstance, you know, uh, define you, uh, it sounds like you're giving, you know, young people the tools to let it shape and mold you and, and you know, you become a better person. Oh, you do. You absolutely do. And, Actions speak louder than words. I'm right. a believer of that. And every year, we get five or six of the kids that grow up. Once they reach age 16, they can go through. We, we, do, we train uh, volunteers in the community. There's a two days of training. And they become the, we refer to them as grief facilitators. And they support the children in the mm -hmm. grief program. And as I say, five or six uh, of these kids come back every year and go through the training and, and become That's grief children. We just did training a couple of weeks ago. We had one of the mothers, widows, that went through the program back in 98 is now retired. And, and so one of the first things she wanted to do is come back and wow. give back to New Hope. Absolutely. And give me some type of um, examples of um, questions. You know, we've described it. We've defined it. You know, and now some of our viewers are saying, okay, I need to know. I, there's a young person in my life, and I know they're going through grief because of, you know, X, Y, or Z. What are some examples of the type of questions that a grieving youth might ask you, and what is the best way to respond, if you can? Well, when, if you're a novice and you haven't been involved in grief situations, the way we interact with the children in our program is we reflect. Mm -hmm. we, we reflect what they say. So if, a, let's say, a, a, a child is in grief and um, he's at, he's, I'll just say a boy, for example, um, says, will I die young like my dad died? Yeah. You want to know if, you're, if you will die young like your dad right. died. So we do that, and kids begin to talk more and more. And as I just mentioned a, few, a little while ago, we want to get feelings out. And this is the way to, right. to, to work on it. We don't probe uh, children. With, 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 we don't query them at all. Um, we... Try to find, in, in, in our program, there's things, art activities, sand, there's a variety of activities right. that we do, that kids normally do, 
but their f forms of expression of what they're right. feeling inside. Exactly. You know, to get to get these out. Um, let me give you an example of. Uh, I remember um, what uh, we had a family come through our program. On this, this is about eight years ago, and the twelve-year-old committed suicide. Mm. I mean, it. it there were three daughters in, in the program, and I'm going to tie a bunch of things together in talking about this. Um, and they came to our program in, 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 at New Hope for Kids. We moved the entire family through the grief process. So it's not uncommon for grandparents, uncles, aunts, right. as well as a parent uh, to be in. We have an adult support group, and we have the children's support group. And we found it, it, it really works very, very effectively right. to, to move these people through. Um, and this particular family, um, we, the, the, the three girls, and I remember one night, uh, Kelly was the oldest, and she had a picture, and, and um, I asked her, would you, Kelly, would you share what your, because I don't know what the meaning is mm -hmm. of all this picture, would you share what your picture right. is tonight, you know, with me? Do you feel comfortable sharing? And, and that was a kind of, you right. know, you, you, you don't try to interpret it. So, so what her picture was, there was three, like, pine trees standing, and there's a tree falling over. And she mm -hmm. says, well, this is my three sisters, and this is my brother yeah. that, had, that had fallen over. Um, and so that was her way of expressing. Now, I, I want to mention something about teens, uh, because sometimes they, they can go off in a, a bad direction. Kelly, for example, was a cutter. She started oh, cutting yeah. herself, and, 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 and teens will do this. It, it, teens... Um, I can tell you stories of teens that get into drugs and yeah. get into, I mean, they're semi-adults and they can really get in, right. in, in the wrong direction. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons I drove me, steered me, sometimes I say God led me yeah. uh, to this was I, I had a company and I worked in the prison system. And what I found well, in this prison system all over the country, right. we automated prisons, and, but I interacted with, with trustees. And it, I was amazed the number of inmates, when I heard their stories, of how they got on a wrong path after a death of one of their parents. And the other, they, they weren't parented. And they end up in a correctional right. institution. And I used to come home, and, and they, I used to say, these aren't really bad people. Right. You hear so much, throw away the key, lock them up. Yeah. But a lot of them really, you, you hear the stories and, and you'd say to yourself, someone's got to do something for these people when they're young after this death to, so they don't get on this path. Before they go, yeah. Yeah. I brought along today, I, I didn't know if you'd remember this, but I'm going to just kind of steer into it. It's kind of gave me a segue. I found a study when, on the National Alliance Grieving Children. I was one of the few people that had a lot of experience with the prison. Others hadn't uh, been exposed to that. And so one of, the, one of my board members sent me a study that was done by the Department of Corrections in Indiana, and they took, they took 161 juveniles that were locked up. And essentially, they did backgrounds, and they found there was three criteria that contributed to these kids being, right. well, all but, I think it was like 154 out of 161, something like that was a number, and they said there was three criteria or three determining factors. Death was one of them, divorce was the other one, and foster care was a third one. And, it, it, and I, I sure saw that when I was in prison, and so uh, that has been a driving force for me. I try to share that with, his, right. you know, with our volunteers and, and our board of directors so that we can serve more children in right. the community. And as I say, it, 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 it makes, it makes sense because you don't want kids committing crimes right. and hurting someone. You don't want to spend all the money you do with the house someone in right. a correctional institution so we can save taxpayers money. So it's, it makes sense for Right. For we need to realize that death is yeah. impactful, yeah. you know, and, and it has an impact on yeah. our future and the person that's experiencing it. Well, Dave, I'm, we're going to take a quick short break and we're okay. going to come back with a, another great topic. So viewers, don't go away. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Josh Temple. You might have seen me on TV where I help folks turn their houses into dream homes. But I don't do it alone. I have help. Raising kids is the same. So when I have questions, I trust the experts at Boys Town. These experts are online at boystown.org, and they have advice to help you handle just about every parenting situation. Forget construction. Parenting is the toughest job there is. 
For services available near you, call Boys Town or visit boystown.org slash Central Florida. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Nick Kroger, and we've kept Dave Joswick here from New Hope for Kids. Um, and thank you again for being here. And that first segment was, you know, wonderful. I, I want to switch gears a little bit, yeah. still talking about our youth, um, but more so on dealing with crisis, specifically in a school environment. And I know we've all seen the news, and immediately when you say school and crisis environment, you know, there's certain things that come to mind. Um, but there are many different types of events that could classify as a crisis, you know, in this realm. Define what is a crisis? Well, a crisis, um, what I think of, of a crisis is an unanticipated death. And a death, it's, it's been an abnormal. It, it's been a, an accident or a, a, a homicide. One that uh, comes immediately to mind was, and you may recall, it's about five years ago now that two boys from... Winter Park High School were brutally murdered mm -hmm. on the Katy Way Trail. And uh, it had a, it just spread through the school. Uh, we provided support. We went out to the school and met with uh, teachers at the school. We had a number of uh, the kids, I think six or seven of the close friends, in addition to one of the families, not both families, but one of the families did come and enroll in our program and brought along six or seven friends to Better, because they were so traumatized by right. the death of their buddies and, the, and their friends. Um, that they, uh, and it, I mean, it worked out as, I think it worked out satisfactorily under the circumstances mm -hmm. of, of these deaths. Uh, I think of another one, this goes back, and you may recall, you, you were mentioned earlier, I mean, you've been in Orlando a while, we had these brutal uh, killings up in, in DeLand. Uh, there was like six kids mm -hmm. that were brutally murdered, and we, we served... I think three or four of those families came down and, and enrolled in our program. But to see the, the impact on the adults and, and the impact on right. the, the brothers and sisters involved uh, with it, we, subsequent to the, the land thing, we formed a, a special circumstance group at New Hope for Kids. And that's uh, where we, we serve both uh, homicide and suicide mm -hmm. deaths. And you're not, a family isn't steered in that direction, but if they want to, uh, right. Part of that, the groups that I mentioned, we actually, I should tell you, we have 10, 10 groups of families. We serve Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have A week and B week. And yeah. then on Wednesday we have back-to-back -back groups um, that we support. And uh, these, these uh, you know, families, because they can identify uh, with, uh, with the pain and, right. and, and the similarity. And, and so they're, to some extent, they're healing. Right. And, and, and I know that, you know, uh, when you're a young person, you're in school, and your teachers and your classmates become like that second family you have. So when a crisis happens, you know, be it a school shooting, even if no one dies in that, I mean, it's still a crisis that would have effect and a ripple effect, you know. And so what is the best way, you know, for fellow classmates or, 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 or teachers even, you know, well, let's, you know, let's deal start, with let's, that. Yeah, let's start with, with the teachers. I, I think what, what teachers can do, and, and I've had in our program, I mentioned the volunteers that work with the kids that go through the training. We've had, a, and we, we continue to have, and we've had a lot of teachers uh, sign up, many of them retired teachers, and they'd say, Dave, I only wish I knew back when I was in right. school what I know now. Um, one of the, some of the things we... That, that they learn is, is when the child is off to, to find out for the child, what should we be telling the class? What, how do they feel? Some children don't want anyone to know that the, the parent, I, I recall a, uh, one of the young girls uh, in our program told me how bad she felt because her dad told the teachers and everyone that uh, her mother had died. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want anyone to know that because, again, she felt different, and, but other people would like so you, right. every case is a little bit different you know yeah but if teachers can talk with the family while their child is out of school to find out um, and explain to the class and talk to the class and and try to be the bridge between the family and the child and, and the classmates yeah. in the school a lot can be accomplished there the thing I, I really emphasize a lot is this reflectivity right if you can reflect back with someone the, the chances of, of saying something are or making an inquiry that is uh, hurtful um, 
by reflecting right. is, is a way to get the, the ball rolling, so right. to speak. Right, absolutely. You know? and, and just reflect that. And uh, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, uh, young people, let, you know, middle school, you know, something's happened, uh, someone has died, a classmate, or, you know, something horrific like a shooting. I would think that at that age, you know, and your intellectual and emotional development, grieving as a, a class or grieving as a school, and not that we're talking about grieving, but yeah. coping with what becomes a crisis yeah. to them, is it better as a as a as a group of classmates to 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 experience and walk through that together, um, rather than you know isolate and deal and think you're the only one feeling this way? Well, I think it's important in in, in any given class there are, there may be one or two other children. It's been interesting with us uh, to me, anyways, to hear kids share with us that they came in contact with another student mm -hmm. that had had a death at school, and and, and of course. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they tend to, to bond there. But as a group, if, if a group can support, it's always better, in a, I believe, in a group setting than, than a one-on-one than -on -one, uh, to support kids. There's, there's things that we, we, we don't want to do. What I've heard in adult support groups uh, from the parents, because the parents are dealing, in, in their group, they're dealing with their personal grief with the loss of, mm -hmm. of some family member. It could be a child, it could be you know, a spouse. Um, and the other, the other, uh, you know, in dealing with that, with that loss, they they also uh, are, are dealing with their children, and, and they're concerned right. about because they've seen a change in the children. Right. I, mean, I can guarantee you, every child is going to change after a death. Um, they tend not to be responsive. Uh, they they tend to just pull back in in school. Uh, I brought along one, another one from Winter Park High School, where a teacher had sent me in, um, um, where her students, the grades just collapsed. Plummeted, yeah. I mean, they just collapsed. And, and this was a special um, uh, gifted child right. teacher. And she did, but then um, she talked to the child four or five months later, and the, the grades are going up. So she, she had a, a conversation with, well, why, what's, What's changed? And she said, well, my mom took my brothers and I over to this place in yeah. Maitland called New for Kids. And he, he couldn't put his finger on it. He said, I can't tell you why. He says, I've just, it's, I've changed. Right. My, my feelings have changed. And, you know, it's, it, it's a subjective issue uh, where you can't necessarily put, right. put your fingers on it. And I tell people, if, if you come and see our program and, and monitor it, it's a very simple program, but right. the power yeah, in that program is unbelievable. To be able to give people the opportunity yeah. to, um, whether it's a death, whether it's yeah. a shooting. I mean, I would imagine that, let's say, you know, some of the school shootings we've heard about in the last decade, you know, is a crisis event, um, and it causes a ripple effect in, um, you know, some of the, the children's lives. It can be as, as effective and, and damaging to a young person, can it not, um, you know, it, just the, the, the tension of that moment and the lasting impact, you know, you know, I always think of the shootings, you know, whether someone even dies or not, that's going to have a ripple effect. That crisis will affect them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah they'll, 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 it'll, it'll, it'll stay with them the rest of their lives. It, yeah. it, it, I can say it, it diminishes, but it never goes away. Right. You know, it, get, it gets to the point where you, you manage your feelings. But I, I, I was mentioning my kids, too, my kids died. My son, this, this June will be 30 years. Mm -hmm. He was 16 years old when he died. It'll be 30. But every now and then when I'll pull his picture, and someone will say, well, well, you know, and I'll show him a picture. I'll get a tear mm -hmm. coming to my eye. And, yeah. And, you know, it, 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 yeah, and imagine a young person trying to process and deal with that. I know, oh. I know a lot of times, um, um, uh, is there something in place, you know, uh, for teachers and faculty that they can learn, you know, how to ask the right questions? You know, is there something the, in the school there, system? Well, it, we're working on that's something. Again, we, we want to do is get educate a, them to help. Educate. We've 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 got a lot of help in Orange County. We've we've got um, Vicki Cartwright, who's the director of of, of counselors and supports right. him. So she's on our board of directors, and she's kind of a link into the school. But there's there's yeah, yeah with kids. One of the I was mentioning earlier about uh, a little while ago about the parents in their group and one of the comments I hear from parents is teachers saying 
well, it's been six months or it's been eight months. You should be over it by now. Yeah. And, and you never, like I said earlier, you, you never do get over it. No, and that's one of the, the definite don'ts is you, know, you, should, you should be right. over it by now. But again, teachers, just, just something as simple as reflecting can, can uh, um, open the door with kids and, right. and, and, and give them attention. And, and don't, you don't need to be hovering over them. Right. You know, I mean, you have to give them, them room to process yeah. and, uh, any kind of a crisis, you know, yeah. and, and room to, uh, you know, in their own terms and in their own time. Yeah process it because we all process it different even as young people we're at different stages in our you know emotional development to be able to even do that i Absolutely. would imagine yeah. i mean no in, 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 in a, what i what i'd say to any teacher is try to foster an environment where the children will express whatever you know do things that will express what they're feeling or what they're thinking inside because that's really the, right. the key to it is is those feelings you know getting those feelings yes. out and and that's where the beauty is uh, in our in our in our program with children is kids tend to listen to kids more than they listen to right. adults and so when you and when you got kids in a, in in the program helping these other kids along in, in talking and conversation even even 10 nine, eight-year-olds. Right, you know, no, exactly. They, they get to understand. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I see, the, you know, the key here, too, you know, talking, you know, about young people trying to process and cope and deal with a crisis environment is, um, you know, they do well with each other. I think it's the comfortability and the common denominator of, of the experience. You know, it may manifest itself differently in each child, but they all have one thing in common and that's we've endured this or we experienced this together. So if I'm hearing you correctly, we need to know as adults and teachers and parents how to, to give them that opportunity with one another to help get the feelings out and process them. That's the key. The key is, 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 is if you get those feelings out yeah. um, and, and create an, it, Organizations like New Hope for Kids should exist across the country. Yeah. And what I would tell anyone out there is, is um, go to our website, look at some of the stories, uh, get a sense for yes. what we do, because it, it's the best way yeah. to get these kids on the track yeah. of improving, getting their lives back in order and it's again. Important. It's an important thing for our, you know, to do. And every, we need to educate one another on it. We're going to have you come back. Uh, we've run out of time. You have, have so you? much information. But viewers, I hope today you've learned something and that whether you're going through grief, whether you're going through a, a crisis or somebody you know, a young person, that you've got the tools now to um, help them walk through that in a better way. So just remember this, if we all take what we learn, link our arms together, we can all spread a little bit of joy in our town. We'll see you again real soon. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.